Having taken the DJI Phantom 2 quadcopter to the air, coupled with the Zenmuse H3 3D gimbal, users are able to create some superbly stabilised video footage. Although in its current form, users are forced to film blind, without actually seeing what they are capturing. That's where a first person view, or FPV, can come in handy. Welcome to IFTI's Tech Corner, where today we'll be looking at the parts required for a complete FPV setup. Although I would always personally recommend flyers keep visual contact with their quadcopter for obvious safety reasons, a full FPV setup comes in very handy for users to glance over and ensure they are getting the shot they need. There are several options and a variety of different components for users to choose from when getting their FPV setup complete, although in this video we'll be looking at the most commonly used components, mixing reliability with ease of use and functionality. Some components are compulsory, users are unable to complete an FPV setup without them, whereas others are optional. Let's take a closer look. Small, lightweight and providing great range, the Immersive RC 5.8GHz transmitter is probably one of the most commonly used by the drone enthusiast. Inside the package users receive the transmitter itself, along with power and video cables, and a standard antenna. Configurable through various channels with the tiny switches on the unit itself, the Immersion RC transmitter is very lightweight. Important for keeping the craft in the air longer and small enough to place in a variety of locations with ease. Without this transmitter, users are unable to complete an FPV setup, so this part of the puzzle is vital. The iOSD Mini by DJI is a small yet powerful and incredibly useful component to mix into an FPV setup. Within the package, users receive the iOSD Mini itself, complete with an attached canvas connector, another small connection cable, and a user installation guide. The DJI iOSD Mini itself is very small and lightweight, sporting a sleek black finish. A USB connection to one side allows firmware updates, along with a video pass-through connection on the same side. The iOSD Mini will provide information, such as battery capacity, height, distance, satellite locks and so on, directly into the video feed, which can all be incredibly useful. Note that users do not need to have this unit at all to complete the FPV setup, it's completely optional, although highly recommended. Installing and setting up of the transmitter, or the DJI iOSD Mini, within the craft itself requires soldering of the included cables, and a little know-how of which wires to solder together. Care should be taken throughout the entire process. Those who do not wish to solder, and are after a cleaner internal setup, have an alternative option in the form of this plug-and-play cable. Available online from firstpersonview.co.uk, it helps provide an incredibly easy and neat installation. No soldering is required by the end user. One end includes a connector which attaches to the Phantom mainboard itself, while the other end incorporates the two connectors required for the power and video feed into the Immersion RC transmitter. In the middle we have a connector to the DJI iOSD Mini. Note that firstpersonview.co.uk also provide a version without the middle connector for those who do not wish to install the iOSD Mini into their setup. A very cheap cable, and although optional, it's very highly recommended since it avoids all that messy soldering altogether. So that's all the components we need on the quadcopter side of things. The Immersion RC transmitter is all that's needed to feed video from the GoPro across to your display, although both the DJI iOSD Mini and the plug and play cable are both highly recommended to provide a complete FPV feed and added useful flight information, as well as the incredibly quick and easy install thanks to the neat cable. When it comes to viewing the video feed, users generally have two options, one being to use FPV goggles, or for those who wish to have a reference point for lining up shots for example, we can use a monitor such as this 7 inch Black Pearl by Flysight. Within the box we have a user guide, along with the 7 inch monitor itself. Beneath this we have a monitor hood to help block out sunlight, 
an assortment of cables which many won't really need, and two standard antennas. The antennas simply screw into the two receivers at the top of the monitor itself in order to collect the video feed, while the hood simply snaps into place to provide a neat overall setup. The bare monitor itself is reasonably thin and lightweight, with two built in receivers across the top, control buttons across the bottom, connectivity and AV ports down one side, including a HDMI port, and power options on the opposite side. The rear holds a built in battery, good for just over an hour's use, which is plenty enough to get you through three complete flights with your Phantom, ample for most users. A standard tripod thread under the unit is perfect for mounting to a tripod and keeping your hands free to concentrate on the flying. Those after a more portable alternative to mounting their monitor are able to mount the monitor to the actual controller itself with the help of a monitor mount, such as this one from Rave Creative. 3D printed using PLA plastic, the unit is perfectly shaped to fit onto your controller and clip firmly down into place, providing a standard quarter inch bolt to now attach the monitor onto. The Rave Creative monitor mount provides a very neat and portable solution to mounting the monitor directly to your controller, while maintaining the default look of the controller by blending in perfectly. Although we now have all components needed for an FPV setup, including some optional additions, it's a good idea to upgrade the standard stem antennas to a set that will provide both longer range as well as added clarity to the video feed, which is why I have opted for the Spironet Circular Polarized Antennas by Immersion RC. These incorporate a cloverleaf pattern within an encased plastic shell for that added protection and should help with clearer image at further distances. Users will require a male and a female set, otherwise referred to as SMA and RP SMA connections, one to fit onto the Immersion RC transmitter, and one for the receiver. Again, an optional component, but certainly recommended. So we have all components required for a complete FPV setup, the Immersion RC transmitter and the FlySight Black Pearl receiving monitor, along with the optional DJI IOSD Mini, plug and play cable to fit everything together with ease, the Rave Creative monitor mount, and finally the Spironet Immersion RC antenna set. I'll leave links to where you can purchase all these items in the description box below. The next step is bolting these all together. Join me in the next video where we'll go through the steps of installing all components, keeping the entire setup as neat and tidy as possible, and we go on to test the entire FPV experience.